Good day everyone, this is Paul, and I know my Harry Potter ch uh, sub-channel has been gathering dust for a while lately, but today I'm going to be changing that, and so I'm going to be offering a spoiler-free review of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which is the newest Harry Potter story. I'm not yet willing to admit that it's the grand finale like Deathly Hallows was, which I happen to have right here. But, it's still worth a read. Now, first off, let me make the disclaimer that if you happen to buy the book, be prepared to persevere, because it's written in the format, excuse me, it's written in the format of a play, so it's not going to be nearly as descriptive as the mainstream seven Harry Potter novels. It's mostly dialogue-oriented, as opposed to um, a combination thereof. Now, this is definitely a much more whimsical Harry Potter book. Don't get me wrong, it gets serious, but, like, the first half of the book is really just setting the scene and showing off some of Rowling's creativity, or just getting you back into the habit of being in the wizarding world. Now, this is one of the I mean, I didn't see the play, so I can't comment on how well the magic managed to happen on the stage, although some of the things they described in this book were like, how would they pull it off on the stage? That is pretty amazing. So looking at it from that standpoint, it is a masterpiece. So one thing I admired about the book was I admired the, the messages. The messages were really relevant in the lives of people that I care about, and even in some senses, they were relevant to me. And it, it did a good job of bridging the generation gap, because part of me was a bit concerned when I heard that the book would be focusing both on Harry and his kids, but the game does a good job of balancing them out, never feeling like one overshadows the other. And it serves as a great way for like the older generation of Potter fans who might now have kids of their own. They can relate to Harry's stories and the people in the younger generation can relate to Albus's stories. Now, admittedly, the book's not perfect. I mean, it still doesn't replace Deathly Hallows as my favorite book, like, period. Um, there are definitely some cringeworthy reveals, but on the other hand, it's a worthy payoff. Like... The messages are so strong that even the rest of the book's shortcomings can be easily ignored for the sake of just sheer, like, goosebump-inducing, like, dang, that's pretty powerful stuff there you've got. Kind of like, kind of like, you know how when, when Harry and Dumbledore have speeches in the regular books, Dumbledore usually gives Harry this powerful moral lesson, but of course... No one's listening to it because they're too busy trying to take in all the rest of the descriptions. But because this is based on a play, there aren't as many descriptions. So it helps you focus a little bit more because you're not trying to constantly envision like what are their faces looking like and what are they doing, where are they. You can just really get to the, the meat of the matter. Now, from a Catholic perspective, it also really shines because... You know, Catholics are all about family and community. There are a lot of points in the book where some of the characters prefer to do it alone or not consult others. And that ends up, you know, causing consequences, shall we say. And so overall, just the, the working together is really where the book shines. In fact, I'd say that, I'd say the same about the Potter series as a whole. It's just Harry Potter without... Harry, Ron, and Hermione's chemistry, the series would be incredibly boring. There's just something lacking, especially in Deathly Hallows. After Ron leaves, the book just almost like takes a nosedive downward in terms of quality. And same thing with the movies. It's just like, there's like, what, a full 15 minutes of no talking in the first Deathly Hallows movie without Ron? So that's one area where this book shows, again, that need for like, no man is an island, you need people, which the the Harry Potter movies have surprisingly portrayed this even better than the books, and this book 
does a good job of preserving that. Now there are a handful of continuity errors here and there. There are a handful of moments where only the movie's introduced and book goers would be like, huh? Too? But they're pretty minor. They shouldn't detract too much from the overall experience. So I'd say it's worth at least a rent. It's, it's not going to blow many people's minds and some people may just give up on it altogether because, you know, they they were expecting Deathly Hallows to be the last and maybe they didn't want to have to proceed, but I assure you, I was a little bit skeptical the first 40 pages of it, but I persevered. I ended up finishing it in a matter of, I think, like, an overall total of, like, three hours. I managed to finish the book all in one day, and I ended up enjoying it. Didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. So, definitely give it a read, especially if, like, even if you're not a Catholic, um, if you ever doubt the values of love, friendship, and family, this is definitely a good book to add to your library. So, thank you very much for listening to my short review, and until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye.